This is Chirpendale, a rustic little village nestled in the hills of a rolling countryside. Oh, don't bother to look it up in your atlas. You won't find it there. It's just one of those little out-of-the-way places we city folks seldom bother to drop in on. And it's a shame, too. There are so many interesting things to see in this world if we'd only look for them. The inhabitants of Chirpendale are pretty much the same as those of other small communities. They have their busy streets, their stores and shops bustling with workaday business. customer now. <laughs> That's what I call service. Let's take a look at that baby carriage. Guess we got here a little too soon. Naturally, a town of this size has to have a transportation system. After all, Chirpendale has a population of 4,202. My mistake, 4,204. Yes, Chippendale is really a growing community. And it has its share of civic pride, too. Here's a statue of a couple of its heroes. These silent pioneers keep a stony watch over the youth of the town as it relaxes among the shady trees. It's really a spot for kids, a fairyland for the younger generation. is Sally Shrill. Her mother is the town's whistling teacher. Sally, your mother's calling you. Of course, no modern community would be complete without lots of signboards to enhance its beauty. if you want to travel locally, just consult our hero, Bill Singer. He runs the town's taxi company. Bill is a hard-working young cabbie who is putting in long hours in order to save enough to ask his sweetheart, Koo, to become his wife. Koo is the daughter of one of Chirpendale's wealthiest citizens, while Bill comes from across the railroad tracks, where his mother boards chicks and takes in washing. There's Ma Singer now. She's a little annoyed. She's just ordered some provisions from the grocery store, and the boy hasn't delivered them as yet. Hey, you better send those vittles up to Ma Singer. She's getting burned up. There he goes. And this is the pawnbroker, another one of Chirpendale's redeeming features. But let's take a look down the main stem, 42nd Street and Birdway. As we amble down this busy thoroughfare, we pass, among other things, the meat market, where they sell worms, 10 cents a link. And here is the palatial Chirpendale Theater. They play some pretty good pictures in there. Hmm, I have to see that. I never did find out who done it. Down at the end of the street is Chirpendale's main hotel, the Renrest. Koo's father owns this establishment. As a matter of fact, there's Koo gazing out of her penthouse now. She's most likely hoping to catch a glimpse of Bill. But he's most likely busy with his taxi. Sure enough, there's Bill taking the pawnbroker back to his office. Up at the end of the street is a village church, the wee Kirk of the Feather. This is where the lovebirds are married. And this is where the matches are made. For every love match she makes, she puts one in the fence. Beatrice is a pretty swell old gal. She takes care of everybody's troubles in town, including this young man. That's Johnny Loon. Folks call him the village idiot. As his favorite actor. Johnny is peculiar, but Beatrice says there's nothing wrong with him except that he came out of a crack egg. 
toward the outskirts of town, we see the village school. Here is where the younger generation start their education as soon as they get their pin feathers. Their teacher is Professor Plato Spoonbill. He teaches that the world is shaped like an egg. Hey, there goes a recess bell. Let's go outside and see what the kids do for recreation. I'll bet the prof needs a little relaxation himself after being penned up with that bunch of fledglings all morning. You know, even though they have wings, they're not all little angels. I'm a bad bird, but I still say the world's not shaped like a man. It's round, it's round. Well, right or wrong, Homer is really upset. our hero Bill Singer has no time for recreation. Here he is taking Mrs. Falcon down to the hotel. Her husband is the biggest lawyer in town. And there's Mr. Falcon now, en route to his office. Oh, he just remembered he's got to stop by the jail. He has a client in there. And here it is. On guard outside is the old warden, Jeb Hawkshaw. Jeb is really on the alert. As we look through the bars, we see Mr. Falcon's client. He's in there for passing a bum chick. As you can see, Chirpendale's municipal departments are well taken care of. Not only have they a jail, they have their own firehouse. And, of course, their own post office. Even the park has all the modern conveniences. Here's the very latest thing in outboard motors. Sally, your mother's calling you. No, not you, Johnny. Oh, well, it's all in fun. I guess that's why Chirpendale seems to be a lovely feathered utopia, where the fullness of life can be enjoyed happily and peacefully. A place where each individual can live contentedly beside his neighbor. <laughs> 